Well, got a lot of activity going on uh, past couple weeks. Um, I ended up deciding to buy that uh, Wells Index Model 847 mill. And uh, so I have an agreement, a verbal agreement over the phone with a gentleman and who's acting as the seller's agent on this, that I'm going to buy the mill and the uh, cabinet. And uh, I'm scheduled to go down this Tuesday, which is April 1st, April Fool's Day, and pick it up. Now, I haven't seen it re-advertised on Craigslist, so uh, it looks like he's keeping to his word and is keeping, keeping it off the market until I come down there and lay the money on him and take it away on Tuesday. So that's going to be interesting. Um, of course, the big question is, what's in that cabinet? Uh, I am dying to meticulously dig through that cabinet and take inventory of what's in there and see just how good of a deal I, uh, how good of a deal I did or didn't get on this because yeah, a, real, a lot of it's going to have to do with, with what's in that cabinet. Um, that being said, I had also already made that appointment to go out and look at that, uh, that lathe, and I started filming that, and then uh, I think the camera died, uh, so I wasn't able to show you that lathe. But, uh, well, other than the, the photo that was in Craigslist. Well, uh, I talked to the guy, and we went back and forth, and he, um, he didn't want to take 200 bucks for the lathe, which I could understand. So we kind of left it at that. And then as I was driving back home from there, it occurred to me that I had seen a couple of uh, drill chucks that were decent shape. And he had told me that he really wanted to get 300 out. So what ended up happening was, uh, as I was driving back, I thought about it and I said, you know, those two drill chucks, I'm thinking, well, if he throws those in, um, I'll go up to 250 So I called him back, talked that over with him, and uh, in the, he said he still wanted to think about it. And then I ended up getting an email where he basically decided to take my offer. So I bought him a little late. Again, um, haven't paid him yet, haven't taken delivery yet, so that's not a done deal as far as I'm concerned until I've got that thing in my hands. So that's, <laughs> I, I didn't need another lathe, but I couldn't pass it up. It's got, it's got Hendy written all over it, not literally, it's actually got Vernon machinery written all over it. But if you look at, you know, and I'm, we're gonna, I'm gonna get some video of that, and you're gonna see that, boy, I'll tell you, the carriage and the apron look uh, and the quick change gearbox all look like handy. They look almost identical to my handy. Very simple. And that's a running lathe, so it's going to be exciting. Um, my big problem I'm going to have with that is deciding what to do. Do I, you know, if the parts on that lathe fit my handy, do I rob parts off of it to fix up my handy? and part out what's left of that thing and scrap the bed. Uh, which would be a shame. I really don't want to do that. Or do I keep it? 14-inch swing. It's actually a little bigger than the one I've got here than my handy. And it's, uh, I think it's a six-foot bed. And what else is it going for? It? Uh, it's, it's complete. And I'm trying to think of... Got a four jaw chuck and a three jaw chuck to go with it. And he had a faceplate, but he can't find it. If he finds it between now and the time that I take delivery, he's going to throw it in. Uh, it was a faceplate with one lathe dog. Anyways, that, so that's going to be exciting. We got a lot of exciting things coming up. Today, right in the next town over from me, pops up on Craigslist Heavy Machines. That's what the ad said. I look at the picture. Lady's got a house that uh, they're selling. The house in the basement of the house is her father's machinery that he brought with him from New York. Down there is a lathe, which you couldn't tell from the picture what it was. What I could see in the background it said two drill presses, and I could see one of them in the background of one of the pictures was a Camelback drill press. Camelback drill presses are cool, so I went and checked it out. It was a Fairbanks drill press. Unfortunately, it had a, a, a broken part on one of the castings. Not not a, a deal breaker, but I just looked at it and geez, I said, you know, I, I just <laughs> spent too much money lately. So um, I had explained to her that, uh, you know, 
initially I had explained to her it was only worth 50 to me, and then when I found the broken casting, uh, I wouldn't go, I, I really didn't want it at all at that point. So passed on that. The other drill press was a bench model that was on a heavy, heavy steel cart, but that had a very interesting jack shaft assembly with some nice S-curve shaped brackets that were really cool. There was another guy there who runs around this area buying machines like that and stripping off. He buys old lathes. He strips off these legs. These are the legs from my handy. He would love these legs. Then he would take my handy lathe and he'd scrap it. He'd take the handles and stuff off of it and then he'd scrap the rest of the lathe. So he's, he's destroyed a lot of machinery in this area. Uh, for the sake of his art or whatever he's doing, he's making workbenches or, or other things with those. So, uh, anyways, the lathe was a really early one, probably like around 1915 to 1925. No quick change gearbox on it. Um, wasn't sure what the swing was on it. That lathe, I believe, uh, might have been a Pratt and Whitney. Not sure. But after the other guy left and basically gave his lowball offers and said 200 bucks for the lathe, which I told her I'm not in the market for another lathe because I just bought this one, for this other lathe for 250. Uh, so he leaves. I told her I said, you know, if he's willing to give you 200 for this lathe, you probably should take it. But she's going to convince her 94-year-old father to give it up he thinks it's worth a lot more so she's got an uphill battle there but uh went and met dad and uh you know for a 94 year old guy he's still pretty sharp and we got to talking and he let me go and look in his garage which hadn't been opened up prior to that and it's just chuck full of stuff so i'm looking around in there and it's kind of hard to get a deal on on anything from this this gentleman because he's really thinks he's on a you know sitting on a gold mine and then finally we came to terms over a couple of boxes of drill bits. And I got him one box for 20 bucks, another box for 25 bucks. And then I had him throw in an indicator base that I found. Because he said he had indicators and I couldn't find them anywhere. But I found the base. I said, I'll give you five bucks for the base, make it 50 even. So this is what I got for 50 bucks. So let's start with the, uh, the indicator base here. Um, not a shop made one. This is a, definitely a... Uh, factory made one and it's got the, uh, the fine adjustment on it here and it's a decent base and then at the end it's actually got this little uh, this little adjustment here or this part so if it was just the base with the rod that's one thing and then you got this on the end here these I've seen these for sale on eBay people just selling just this part right here for you know, five or ten dollars so that's a, a deal and then on top of that, it's got this little type of indicator, which is kind of neat. This is called a Verdict Junior. So you can actually see the little tiny needle move in there. So uh, that's kind of cool. So not bad at all. So one of the wooden boxes was actually a draw, so uh, he wanted me to Give, keep you know he wanted to keep the draw because he thought he might have a cabinet that fit so I, I was just put them all in one big box and, um, so I just kind of want to get I want to get your guys opinion on whether or not I did okay here I I've been watching um, used drill bits with tapers on them and tangs on them like this on eBay and I've seen you know some of these drill bits are bringing some of these bits are bringing you know two three five seven eight dollars a piece for used ones depending on the size and all that. So, um, so here's three, six, nine, here, here's 11. So, uh, you know, $45, that seems like a lot for just 11 of these. That's, that's, uh, that's almost $4 and 50 cents a piece. Oh, maybe we should add this one. Just kidding. Got another box here. Ah, that's more like it. Now that's 32. And they're not huge, but, uh, you know, uh, 32. So that's not bad. That's, uh, that's still over a buck a piece. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's over a buck a piece. You know, and they're awfully small. Oh, let's see what we got here. All right, that brings us up to 41. Yeah, 41, but I paid 45. So we're still, <laughs> we're still just over a dollar a piece. But at least they're getting bigger. 
Ah, uh, now we're cooking. Added these here, that makes it 49. Now we're under a buck a piece. And now we're starting to get into some nice, decent sized drill bits here. That's got an unusual deal on it the way that one's kind of like a step taper to it. Let's just see. That's a big one there. Got a nice edge on it. Doesn't look bad at all. Not sure what size that is. A little bit of surface rust on there. All right, that one's a three-quarter inch. And this one here looks like it might be also three-quarter inch or close to it. What did I say? 49, right? Ah, this brings us up to 60. And now we're getting into some bigger sizes over here. And there's this one, there's this one here that's not a, uh, not a taper. Maybe it originally was a taper and somebody turned it down. And I could see that, that that would not be very handy thing to have. That would, you could see that's really probably spun in a lot of chucks over the years. But for the most part, pretty good shape. And we got some, some good size hefty ones here. Let's take a look at the size on this one. All right, this puppy right here is 13 sixteenths. So not quite an inch. This is a big one. Well, I didn't mic it, but I think this is one inch. I got this little brown and sharp caliper that I grabbed to take with me today and it was in my pocket. I just set it to one inch and that's not quite an inch, so I'm going to have to clean that up to see if I can see what it is. But, uh, you know, it has some surface rust on this from sitting in that unheated garage, but, you know, that tip, that still looks pretty keen to me. And these are all high-speed steel, so they can be reground as long as they're not completely trashed. So that's 60 drill bits for uh, for 45 bucks. That's pretty good. But I mean, really, I mean, this one really you can't count, right? So we're not quite at 60 yet, are we? Now counting our orphan here, we got 65, and now we got some hefty ones here. This puppy right here is one and one sixteenth of an inch. That. That'll make a big hole. And that is also one and one sixteenth of an inch. So we got some duplicates here. Hmm. So we're going to have to decide at some point whether or not to eBay the duplicates or keep them as spares. Now this is starting to look like a real good deal. Yeah, inch and a sixteenth. That's, that's a good size drill bit. Let's add three more and make it sixty-eight. How about these puppies? That big honking drill bit. Now that's a drill bit. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a one and a quarter inch drill bit. That one on the edge is a little bit chewed up. That could be reground. So what did I say? 68 drill bits, right? How about plus? some taper shank tapered reams one two three is a little one four is a pretty good size one five six seven oh that one's damaged Eight, nine, nine tapered reams. So now it's looking like the deal of the century. Just about. How about we add in, this is a little taper adapter to go into a drill chuck. So, hey. How about a nice tapered adapter? So that's so you can put a bigger sized tapered drill bit into a smaller drill press, right? And I take that back. I think that's just an extension because I'm pretty sure that taper size is the same as the drill I just put in it there. So this is just like, I guess we got to reach down into something to, to drill it. 
So, that's uh, that's my haul for today. Uh, that's my $45 drill bit lot. And uh, so that, that's, I'm pretty happy with that. Ah, you thought I was done, huh? How about that, Big Daddy? <laughs> it's an inch and 25 sixty-fourths. That is a big sucker. And that one is in excellent shape. Probably didn't see a lot of work. So that big, that's, that big daddy is the biggest one. Oh, wait a minute. Inch and three-eighths. This one looks really good. Just a little bit of spotting surface rust on it. Another gigunda. Alright, last one, I promise. Biggest one of them yet. Inch and a half. One and a half inch drill bit. The only thing with this one is, look how uh, shallow the point is on this one. Somebody really ground that. I mean, I'm assuming that was ground that way by design. Somebody had a reason for that. Not sure what. But, uh, I mean, I guess you counterbore with this. So, but these two are really nice shape. I can't wait to go on Flea Bay and uh, look at the auctions and see what uh, just one of these drill bits might run somebody if they needed to buy it, you know, even used. So, that's my haul. And then just for comparison, let's... Uh, Grab one of the little ones. This is this is one of the ones I started out with showing you. And this is the the one, the big daddy, the inch and a half. So and then there's the inch and three eighths. Kinda cool. Couldn't pass that up.